Okay, here we go. Hey everybody, it's Patrice and Erin, and we are at KW Athens, Greece, Athens Center in Greece, and we are talking about our lead generation series about client events. Oops, and it looks like my screen is uh, bopping around, so bear with us. So I run a small team in the San Francisco Bay Area. We love, you see my bridge in the back, so we love coming from contribution and going back and forth. So. Um, this is how partly how we lead generate. We talked about that last week. We love agent to agent referrals. And so for Aaron and me, we've decided that we want to help other agents to build their business. And I come from Contribution Way. So we teach these classes around the world. And uh, Aaron, go ahead and introduce yourself as well. Aaron from New York City. So excited to be here. All right. And I'm going to click us right through. So, uh oh, number one, today we're talking about client events. And again, bear with me today, you guys on screen, because uh, with only one screen, it's a little harder to kind of keep up. But why, number one, this isn't something that everyone does. And I think in some of the classes that we've talked to in Europe, some people are like, they find this to be a little strange to have these events and worried about why this would work out. So number one, why is this a good option? You guys, this is a, such a great way to just be very authentic, to be very real and to attract business without saying, hey, do you wanna buy a house today, right? Or, hey, do you wanna sell a house? This is such a way to really get to come from contribution and to really show your character. And it's a lot more natural. So it's just a, it's, and it's fun, right? Erin, do you have anything that you wanna to add to that of why you think this is a yeah. good option? Absolutely. I think a lot of people look at lead generation as just making phone calls and it can almost be a little intimidating. And while absolutely phone calls need to happen, events are a different way to get in front of people, be stay top of mind and get business while maybe not being as intimidating as cold calling or other things like that. And it's also a great way to give back to your clients, to your database, to the people that you know, um, and build business as well along the way. 100%. The reason that I partly got into this, and thankfully before COVID, this was how I got all of my business. This and open housing is having parties, having interactions with people in a natural way that they would like me. People want to do business with people that they like. And so it's a way to show who they like, but we were at Mega Camp, Mega Relief uh, four years ago when Mega Camp had to turn to Mega Relief when there was a flood. And on the bus, I was able to be coached for, we were on there for two hours and we had these amazing, amazing leaders. And someone said, we were talking about 36 touches and how do you talk to people 36 times a year, right? It's like, oh my gosh, that seems like I'm bothering people. That's what I used to think. And then someone said, oh, I just host events and I host four events a year and I just make sure to touch everybody four times before and four times after and you're done. I was like, oh my God, can it really be that easy? And you guys, it can be, when, it, when we're not in a pandemic, it can be that easy. And Aaron and I in our classes always teach that how many pillars of business should we have for building an MREA business, Aaron? No more than five. Five. So we get to choose five ways to generate business, to lead generate that fit your personality. So today we're going to discuss this option and you can decide, does this fit your personality and your business? So the next thing is, how do we connect with your sphere and your community if you're going to do these events? So we kind of have a little list here that we'll go through. You can just do all kinds of different ways. You heard Ian talking about before. You can do community events, client events, giveaways, parties, appreciation parties, photo shoots, all kinds. We'll get more into detail, but you guys, anything that you can think of that might be of value to you might be of value to your client. So this is a way to look at who are you as a business person? Who do you want to attract as clients? Because that's what it's all about is they come and give business directly to you. And what does that person want? What might they want? If they were a family, maybe a family event. If you're looking for new buyers, maybe educational events, all kinds of stuff. And then the last thing in our class that we're going to talk about is, okay, you've decided this is your business. Well, what do you need to consider so that we're doing it as an MREA agent, right? What is the right way to use this to build your business? 
So we're gonna discuss some of those things as well to make sure that there's a strategy. Is there anyone that have any, does anyone have any questions before we move on from there? We are good. Okay, perfect. I just have a little okay, screen that- Katarina. Oh. Hi, Katarina. Can you unmute yourself? There you are. Hello. You mentioned the parties. Okay, I can understand the, the open houses, but what about the parties? That's what do you mean? Well, and there's all kinds, and that's what we're going to talk about today. You see, I have some pictures on screen, and these are all from some of the events that we've done before. So we're literally talking about you can have a client appreciation parties. You can have a cocktail hour. You can have an opening night for someone who's starting a new business. We've hosted grand openings for people. Um, you see things like with face painting. We do client appreciation events with uh, face painters and photographers. And uh, you'll hear more about it in Aaron's database class, but we do giveaways where you're giving things to your top clients. So all of these can incorporate an event and it's really anything that you could possibly think of, to be honest. And we'll share some of our ideas. And I hope that you ask more questions and go forward. Is that kind of answer to start with? But everything's an event. Everything can be an event. And what we're talking about today isn't just throwing parties for the sake of a party, although I am down for that too. We're talking about how do you turn throwing parties into a way to build your business, a really, really big business. Well, and I think the reason or one thing to keep in mind is, you know, events doesn't have to be for everyone. However, we the one of the main reasons I think a lot of us are with Keller Williams is because they teach us that we need to build a life by design, right? So if having events, you know, for instance, we um, are starting in July, we're doing um, canine social, and it's going to be once a month where we, I don't have a dog, two of my team members, and they love their dogs and getting together with their dogs. So it's going to be at a brewery and we're going to do a whole event around it. We will sponsor everybody's first drink, but it's a way for people to meet more people, get all of their contact information, right? And because the team is sponsoring it, we'll have a little blurb in there. Just, you know, please feel free to bring referrals. We'll give them a second drink if they bring a referral with them. Um, but we're trying to find ways to engage with other people that we enjoy, right? Because then it's a whole lot less like work and it's a whole lot more like fun and things that we like to do that is incorporated with in order to get us business. Does that make sense, Katerina? Basically, she's just choosing something that she enjoys to attract the people that she would enjoy being with that may like to do business with her, either give her a referral or support her business in some way. Fun, right? Is that something that ever, do you guys see, have any agents that are doing this in Greece now? Have you seen this happening with any of the agents? Not really. No. What about me? No. Not really. Well, that this means it's a fantastic opportunity. Yeah. Constantina, did you want to say that again? Constantina? I said that I think it's occasional. It's not something uh, okay. we used to do, but um, it's um, easy. We always do something uh, in order to have uh, some fun. So we can do it uh, having a purpose, purpose. So it's not that difficult. Yeah. It's more and, conscious. Yes. And it's really about how do we hold it accountable for business, right? Because this is something that I've been doing for a long time, but it wasn't until last year at Mega Camp where I was hearing from some other, and every year, I hear from other agents that are really making this a really big part of their business, but you have to be very purposeful. And we have to make sure that we're, that it's not just a party, that it's also a business party. Number one, it is a business expense for us, so we do get to write it off. 
number two, you can bring your friends and family because you want them to give you referral business. And Erin's going to share with us how she gets that for sure. She makes sure that people bring their the right people to the party. But it's just, again, it's a really interesting way. And as Erin mentioned, to build around who you are naturally and who your clients are naturally. So, so we have a little list on screen of all a bunch of whole different things that we could talk about. And you heard Ian, who we taught this class, what, two months ago, and they're planning a shredding event, right? So you can have an electronic recycling event. So if someone brings all of their paperwork, you can have shredded. Does that make sense? Do you guys know what a shredding event would be? Oh, I think we're frozen. So it's very important in the state after tax season. So we can all shred our, our uh, socials. Yeah. Well, and especially with so much fraud going around. So people don't Perfect. know what to do all with right, their paperwork. Patrice, what is next? Should we are we frozen? I think we're frozen, you guys. Are we frozen? Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. Nope. Okay, we're back on. I think your connection might be a little slow, but I think you're good. Sorry, guys. So anyway, so business events, family-friendly events. Erin mentioned um, doing dogs. People love their dogs and people love their kids. If you have anything for dogs and kids, people are going to show up, right? You can do a contest or a giveaway. We've done it before where we said, whoever refers us, anyone who's thinking about buying or selling in two years, we'll put you in a contest to win a $250 gift card to a restaurant for uh, Valentine's Day. So we, we did that before. By the way, it wasn't incredibly successful, but we got five referrals out of it, right? So technic, you know, I was hoping for 50, but we got five referrals. That's awesome, right? And we got into people's minds for that. You can host a movie theater. You can have happy hours. We do those a lot. It's just very, very simple. We appreciate hey, you. Thank you for being, yeah. Am I frozen? Did you stop me? Uh-oh. I think it's best if you stop your camera for your survey. Sorry, you guys. Is it my? Yeah. Do you want me to turn off my camera? Yeah. So one of the things this was saying, yeah, that's okay, though. Yeah, I think it might just help your connection. Okay. Stop video. How about one now? of the things that Patrice was saying and what the things that I love about her perfect is that she's so purposeful. So what she was saying is she does a gift card where it was, if you give us a referral for someone that is looking to buy or sell in the next two years, then we will put your name into a drawing for a gift card. And the gift card was for $250 for, it was uh, on purpose for Valentine's Day. Um, for someone to go to a restaurant, right, or to go to a restaurant. And she's saying, like, while they may not have had, you know, 20, 30 people, they still got five referrals out of it, right? And that's definitely, you know, if you take your average commission, and then you see what it is from that $250, it's definitely worth to, to think outside of the box like that. And that's one of the things that I love about Patrice that she's really taught me, because while um, I do a lot of events, it's great that she's so purposeful with the event um, because that's how you, how you get the best results out of it. Um, Definitely. Sorry, you guys, about the connection. I'm so sorry. Can you hear me? Sorry, you guys. Yeah. So, and again, we're just throwing ideas out there that you can think of anything. So for, for now, um, the other things you just really want to be out in your neighborhood your community people do garage sales i don't know if they have do garage sales in greece but those are very popular here in the us where you put your open house signs out you get the entire community all together at the same time 
and they really are thinking about you and you blend this with your farming. I don't know if you guys are doing farming and door knocking where you're mailing to the certain neighborhood over and over again, but when you have a farm, you wanna think about doing events that really tie in together. We talk all the time about one plus one equals eight. Well, you wanna say, if I'm doing farming and lead generation, what can I do to supersize this so that I get the most, so that your farm sees you as a professional, as a person in the community. You do social media around it and you show your face and they eventually really do believe that you are the person that sells all the houses in that neighborhood. And they think of you instantly. That's the goal that we wanna have here. I know we just did Red Day. So any of those kind of community events of giving back that are already happening in your community, it's another great way to be involved is to piggyback on that same event that they're having. If there is a wine festival, can you rent a booth? Can you give more exposure? Can you just send an invitation to the people that you care about? with a drink ticket and say, if you reach out to me, I will give you one free drink ticket, right? There's all kinds of things you could do, an ice cream. I've heard about um, an ice cream social where this is great for new agents if you don't have a really big budget. You literally just invite everybody in your database, your friends, your family, and you say, I wanna meet more clients. Who can you bring to come to this ice cream social or whatever? And you stand outside of an ice cream store with your business card and you give it out to the people and say, if you, you know, you're my guest, I'm treating you to ice cream. And you literally just tell the owner that you're going to pay for all of it at the end if they gave the business card. So you can make it very, very simple or you can make it very complex where you're hosting. You'll see in our pictures, we rent out an entire park. And we have photographers and all of those things. Erin, I know you talked about renting out a restaurant. Will you share how you have how you blend your own um, business party with adding more value to, to the restaurant and to building your database because of that? Absolutely. Yeah, so I think the main thing here, right, is real estate is a numbers game. And I believe the last stat um, was that every person knows five people a year that will make a real estate transaction. So at the end of the day, this really is a numbers game, right? How many people can we get in front of? Which is why events are an easy way to kind of supersize the amount of people that you're getting in front of, you know, for one hour or for two hours. So what we want to do is we want to start, um, by getting those touches in, right, by asking people if they want to come, right, that's the first thing you do, and that is a touch, right, we're doing an appreciation, and um, I'll talk about the restaurant, um, and after we, so we make the phone call, right, that's our first touch to them, and then the second thing that we do is we'll send them a little form to look, RSVP, first we ask them their name, and the second thing that we ask them is, who are you bringing that I should meet? So we're already that. planting it in their head in the very first thing that they need to be bringing someone for us to meet. Everybody does, but a lot of people do. And then we have that person's name to start with. And so what we'll do is we'll rent out part of a restaurant, not the full restaurant. We just rent out part of that restaurant. And then we want to make it look amazing. So we'll bring balloons. Um, we have gift baskets set up that I'll talk, or gift bags that I'll talk about as well. And we only rent out part because I want everyone else in that restaurant to see us there, our gift bags. We have things that we raffle off so that even people in the restaurant are like, oh, what's going on over there? What's going on, right? And then we'll have someone from the team that's standing close to you know, the in and out for our area so that people can ask like, oh, what is this? And they're like, well, this is our appreciation event. And then we'll even throw them a little hint, like, oh, if you know anybody that's interested in real estate, maybe we'll let you in, right? Um, because we do open bar, we do offer food. So it's a great way to even get exposure within the restaurant to other people that are there for, you know, whatever their dining or drinking needs are, right? So again, we're trying to kind of 10X that. Then what we do is we make sure that we have raffles there 
Um, I think a raffle is the easiest way to get somebody's contact information. Everybody will give you their name, their number, et cetera, if they have a chance of winning something. And I think very often in real estate, we forget the kind of power that we have as agents. But what we'll do is we'll go to local businesses and we'll say, you know, hi, my name is Erin. I run a real estate team here in New York City. We're going to have an event where we invite 50 of our top referral partners. And we would like to offer your, you know, products as a raffle gift or as a gift in our gift basket, right? Because if you word it properly, what that owner is going to think is, wow, you are having, oh, and we also, I actually have never said this, but we also allow them to come as well so that they can talk about their product or whatever, meet people, right? Um, but what they're thinking then is, these are people that give you business. Maybe they can become someone that gives me business. So it's a value add for that store as well. So very often they will give us gifts that we will put in our gift baskets for, or gift bags for people to take when they leave. Or if they don't want to give, you know, 50 of an item, um, sometimes they will just give like one big item and then we'll raffle those items off, which again, it's another way for us to get people's information when people bring guests. So it's just another way that you can kind of uh, level up your event. So do you hear what she's saying, you guys? I just Any want to read questions about that. Yeah, so she, number one, she invites people and at the invite, she asked them, who are they gonna bring? So already she's building her database and telling them that she expects referrals for number one, which is wonderful. You've made them feel special because it's a client appreciation for their top 50 clients, right? Which is amazing. You're giving that restaurant business. So that business owner, you're helping their business. Hopefully they're going to support your business as well. And then you're getting gifts from other businesses. Again, you're really building up such a big network. And then you're adding more people to your database just because they're seeing you and you're being a kind of a commercial for yourself, right? I think that's amazing. Does anyone have any, do you guys have questions? Yeah. Does everybody know what a raffle is? Does that word translate? Constantina, Maybe. do you so know what that a is? A raffle would be when people like write their name and it goes into a bucket and then you pick out. Yeah. Yes, we know. It. Yes. Okay. It's uh, <laughs> uh, something uh, kids usually do more at school. So we know the procedure. <laughs> it's yeah, accident. like a contest. Uh, yeah. Well, the people yeah. love it here and it's a great way for you to get their name, their phone number and their email, right? If people don't wanna give that to you, they'll write it down if they think they can get a present. Yeah. And then- And you can do the same thing at open houses as well, so that you're still getting people's contact information if they don't wanna give you their information at the door. Um, are you, do you do open houses there in Greece? And because of the COVID, uh, we didn't have the opportunity. But uh, mm -hmm. slowly and carefully, we do virtual open houses. Uh, but okay. uh, we want so much to do it. Yeah. OK. Same. Yeah. And and Erin will talk next week. She actually makes her open house an event. But that kind of falls into next week's class a little bit more. But again, this all blends in together because you do one thing that helps support your next, your next thing. The other idea, we're talking about fun parties, which is great, but you also, you can do educational parties for your buyers and sellers. So you can have an event where you're saying, I'm helping first time buyers to learn how to, they're scared, right? So that's another wonderful event. A senior citizen, older people that are downsizing, they are also very terrified. They bought their house 50 years ago. There's lots of equity, but maybe they don't have any money today, right? A lot of seniors are on a fixed income. 
and they don't understand how to get money from the equity from their house to move to their next stage of life. So that's another wonderful class that we can create an event around. And by the way, this can happen on Zoom or in person. And this is something that again, you can get out to your database and we'll talk about that next, but all kinds of things. And then the last one that I wanna make sure we touch on is a housewarming party for your client who just bought a house. So they just moved. Another great way is for you to say, let me host your party. You bring champagne or food or a photographer, whatever that is, it's your way of saying thank you for working with me and a great way for you to get to meet all of their neighbors, their clients. And Erin, I know you do this too. You actually say, give me your database and let me handle the invitation. So there's so many different ways that we can do. And these are a few ideas. Yeah, if you think about um, Yeah, so what we'll do is we love to do a housewarming party. We haven't done it for a little while, of course, because of COVID. But what I will say is these people have just had a great experience with you. They better have. <laughs> and so what you do is you say, look, I would love to throw you your housewarming party. We've never had someone say no. So we will have it catered. Uh, with food, and then we will also bring drinks. We offer to them for us to send out the invites. To them, they think that we are being so wonderful, right? We're even sending out the invites for us. We are gathering data. We are gathering the names and information of their, right? Then we will go, we'll set everything up, um, and then we stay for about the first hour-ish, maybe two hours. Um, and then these people are so excited to show everyone their home, right? And then you get to be there as like the shining light that helps them find this beautiful home. So they instantly like you. They're always having conversations during it about real estate, right? What was the process? Um, very often the homeowner will be like, oh, just go talk to Erin. She knows. Oh, yeah, no, just go talk to Erin, right? And it's a great way to build those referrals. Another thing is, you know, for me, I constantly want to try upping price point, right? Who doesn't want a higher price point? And the truth is, people tend to hang around with people that are like them. Um, and therefore, when you do want a price point, when you put somebody into a home in a certain price point, then just imagine you're getting to meet a lot of other people that are probably in that same price point. So it's a great way also to up level where you're at price wise. Yeah. And you guys, and this course, really does work. People to see if they have any questions. Yeah, any questions? This truly does work. If you just are around people. Oh, Patrice, that really works. It really does, right? If, well, everything works. You just need to be around people so they can see who you are as a professional. And naturally, they want to give business back to you. It's such a, it, by the way, this isn't going to get you six deals this week necessarily, but it will build a long-term business that will constantly support you and give back. Although it might give you six deals this week if you're purposeful. Am I frozen again? Uh-oh. Yes, and I think that is, I think that it, you, you were for a minute, you're good. I think that is the point of this, right? Is this is a great way for you to build the long-term business, to be giving back continuously, to start being known as, you know, maybe somebody that's doing these events and to be able to grow your database with this. You know, I know pre-pandemic, we were doing like three big events a year and people would call, Aaron, when's the next event? When is the next event? I want to bring someone that you can meet. Um, and it just becomes a form of growing business and a form of growing your database. That's fun. I mean, if you wouldn't have fun throwing these events, then don't do them, right? This is just a way for you to generate for your business 
in a way that's fun for you, whatever that may be. Um, and also a way to give back to the community, right? Does anyone have questions? No. Awesome. Or does anybody have any thoughts about an event that you guys could throw? I know it's um, Patrice did a great job. She helped a, I believe it was a salon. She threw their um, grand opening party for them. And she's gotten a lot of business from them. So Salons much business. Salons are great. Everybody talks. Everybody does. And people appreciate you sponsoring their business, right? So we actually, now that it's out of COVID, we're about to have a few more businesses. So I have my beauty doctor. We host parties and we just bring, there's lots of women that sell beauty products, right? We have Orban and uh, Rodin and Fields and Stella and Dot, all of that makeup stuff. And if you host a party and you let them support their business, I don't even talk about my business. I just bring everybody there and coordinate. And then I tell them, help them support their business. And they give me so many referrals because they know that I'm helping them. So you guys, you could do anything. So this brings us to, if you're gonna do this, what do you need to consider? And maybe take a picture or write this down. You need to decide what, what is your theme? Where are you gonna do this? You can do it at your home. You can do it at a client's house. You could do it at a restaurant or a park, right? You have to choose your date and time, obviously. You do wanna make sure that there's not another event at that same time. Trust me, we've, I've had that before where someone was setting up at my event. We were able to get the space, but you really want to be careful. You want to think about who is my audience. You can have your entire database, but as Aaron talked about, maybe you just want my top 50. Maybe you're looking for people that have dogs. Whatever that is, you get to decide, but you should have it somewhat focused so that people find that it's specific for them and it feels special. You should have a goal for your event. Is this to build your database? Is it to get more referrals? Is it to get your name out there in the community if you wanna sell only in this house? So you should have an idea of what is my event? Am I just being thankful? Do I want business? It could be any of those things, but you wanna make sure to think it through, right? You can decide if you wanna have a support a charity at the same time. Maybe ask everyone to bring a canned good or something if it's for pets. They can bring some dog food that you can donate to a local charity, right? You're giving exposure to that charity as well. And then you have to think about it like a business. What's your budget? Do you have the money to do it? What are the responsibilities? Who's going to help you? You don't want to get there and be all by yourself with 50 people and you're not prepared. You have to really make sure this is your opportunity to show who you are. So you really wanna make sure that this is a very professional event, not the same as you do at your home. You wanna be there early and make sure you have enough people to help, right? And then again, with your goals, making sure that you're setting it up for goals, especially if you're gonna to touch people beforehand. You wanna have a marketing plan and you wanna consider if you're gonna have sponsors like Aaron talked about. So you can get someone, a lender to pay for the food for your event, that's what we do. We have them bring the food because that's a pain in the neck. I don't want to deal with it. They have to carry all of it in. They do the grocery shopping, they pack it up and they leave. It's super easy. I just come and smile. But you really want to make sure to think all of that through and it's different on every time. And then ultimately, you guys, this is all about your real estate business. This is a way to get business for your real estate business. So I have on the screen different ideas of touches that you can do to, to connect. So as Aaron talked about, you know, you put people on your social media, you can send them an invitation, you make phone calls. We have to make phone calls to clients all the time to check in and we don't wanna say, hey, do you wanna buy a house today? Or, hey, can I have a referral? It's a lot easier to say, hey, did you hear we're having a wonderful client event? You're so important to my business. I would love it if you would come. And as Aaron taught me, please let me know who you should, who you want me to meet who are you bringing? I would love for you to bring someone that would either enjoy this event or who's thinking about doing real estate in the next two years. I wanna to get to know them on a personal basis so that that way they can trust me and know who I am, right? 
and then broadcast it. You saw all those pictures. You guys, pictures are literally worth a thousand words for a reason. If you look like you're having fun, people will have it. So take pictures. You could post pictures of you and your friends and use that as an for your invitation on your social media, right? And we want to be personal. You can do a handwritten well, note. Go ahead. Sorry, just to take that one step further, um, because Patrice has taught me this. So if think about it this way. If you have a photographer, a professional photographer at an event, right? They're going to take beautiful photos. Who doesn't like photos of themselves? Uh, everybody does, right? If it's done properly and they look good. So then what you want to do with those photos is put them on social media like Facebook, and then you tag your clients in these photos. Now, these photos are going to show up on their Facebook pages, right? And now you have people commenting, oh, that looks so great. Where were you at? Oh, that's fantastic. How was your night? What were you doing? Where were you? Who were you with, right? And all of these people are now getting exposure to you for your event, right? They can click, they'll see what the comment is or what the title is on the actual photo where you'll be, be very purposeful, like, oh, giving back to our favorite clients, giving back to our top 10%, something like that. But these people are now seeing it. You know what these people are thinking? My real estate agent never invited me to anything. I never had a real estate professional do this. Who's your agent, right? And then they want to be a part of it as well connect what you're doing and get more exposure for you and your business. Absolutely. Yeah, it's this is a big part of branding yourself, right? You set your up yourself up to look like the the big agent on campus and very very professional. So, and you also want to tag um maybe different if you're doing a kids event, tag parents groups in the neighborhood. If you're doing a luxury event, maybe tag a luxury brand or a luxury store in the neighborhood. This works on Instagram and Facebook. You want to connect people and get an audience and have people see you. Even if they don't come to your event, you don't know that exposure that you're going to have outside, right? So you really want to make sure um, to set yourself up to have maximum exposure. And then again, but the main thing, you guys, is you want to be face-to-face stomach to stomach, mouth to mouth. Oh, that sounded weird. Mouth to ear. Listen, having people <laughs> talking with people about who you are in your business. Because remember, this is just a, a creative way to touch people. This is your 36 touch plan in practice and a nice way to share who you are. And so that's before the event, which is exciting, but it's even better after the event because it's so nice when you call someone after and say, I'm so sorry that I missed you. I'm sorry that you couldn't come, right? People feel special if you notice that they weren't there. Oh, I really was looking forward to see you. I'm sorry we missed out. I hope you can come to our next event. You know, I love you being a part of my business and don't worry, I'll net let you know next time. Or, hey, thank you for coming. I know I was really busy. It really meant a lot. I love that you support my business. By the way, while I have you, is there anybody that you could think about that I may wanna call? I've made a commitment to double my business this year, which means I need to know a lot more families, right? And I love what I do. So I would love it if you could share that with me. So it's, it's just that simple. And you guys, it really is that easy. And you can find a way to creatively do a touch, a tag, a text, a phone call, all of the above. And it's easy to build a, a business just by doing this. And it really does work. Any questions? No. Or I should say any ahas because ahas are great too. Hello again. Hi. It's a question and uh, an idea. Hello. Okay, so I have an idea. Uh, a friend of mine is a fashion designer in Greece. And during all his catwalks, all his shows, uh, on every seat, of the persons uh, who are watching the catwalk, there is uh, some gifts uh, from some sponsors. I was thinking that maybe um, because I have a very related with him, uh, I could uh, 
you know, we have something to our company, you know, uh, the Keller Williams Center, um, something like a card or something, and uh, maybe a free um, valuation of uh, the property, something like that, because he's, uh, he's a bit famous in Athens, and uh, maybe that's a nice idea, and I would like to hear your opinion about that. Yeah, that is so good. You absolutely should do that. Absolutely, right? Free home evaluation. And that's, that's just amazing for you and your business. Then you're getting in front of them. Then you know more inventory for potential sales down the road, on market or off market, and you can become their real estate agent of choice. That's a fantastic idea. I love that. And we always host... I always like to host the champagne table. You could do whatever, but I like champagne because people always seem to want a case of champagne. And I literally make a sign that says, Patrice Sandstrom Real Estate Group is proud to be in business and partnership with the person's name. And I just put a sign at the champagne table and I just kind of leave that out there as well. And then again, you sh in my opinion, you should go to every one of those events because you want them to know you as a person too. So if you could kind of do cover a few different territories, great if you could have your name out, absolutely perfect to ask to offer the free evaluation. But some people may not say yes until they know who you are. So know that it might take three or four of these events going again and again before you really get that business, but it's because they need to know who you are, right? And it may not be the right time for them. So I love that. I love that idea. I think that's fantastic. And maybe you could give him even more events too. He could do more events if you're helping to cover some of those costs and, and helping with some of the legwork, right? So I love it. I think that's a great event, a great idea. I can't wait to hear more about it. Thanks. Uh, the, the other thing that was similar is that PH and Mayel and and France, they actually, when they were starting the KW Luxury there, they did host an event at a house. They had someone bring lots of great art. They also went to a luxury car rental place because they're in the south of France. So lots of people go and do the car rentals there. So they ended up having these amazing cars out front. They were able to cross lots of other um, high-end services and these businesses came too. So keep thinking outside of the box. What else can you bring to him? How else can you set it up so that you could supersize it? Because the more people that you support, the more people that will support you in return. That's what this is all about. Isn't this such a fun idea? Any other ahas? George, you're my only other one. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Katrina. We have to fix this in Greece. It is not uh, very usual to have uh, this uh, kind of events, but we are trying. I love it. I, I do want to tell you, this is not usual in New York either. And that's how you stand out, right? Because people don't do these events. So when you do the events, then you become that person. Exactly. This is uh, what uh, we are trying to do now. Uh, for example, uh, it was my first uh, time in Red Day uh, since I joined uh, Keller Williams. It was very nice, but we need uh, some more action on this respect. Uh, so we have uh, still work to do front of us, it is uh, also a point um, in terms of mentality, in Greek mentality, if you understand. These gatherings, uh, sometimes uh, Greek people think that, oh, uh, you are doing this for advertisement uh, reasons only. It is not uh, something you uh, really, uh, that you are really interested uh, to help people, you see? Well, and I think that's something you have to prove to them, George. I think yeah. they have to see no, where it no. is. Right. And you just have to show that and be who that. So when you're at the event, don't talk about business, right? Unless you're educating them on being a buyer event. But if it's just a personal event of, I really want to give back to you, 
you really give back and you make sure that the pictures reflect that. So like I said, it may take us some time, but it truly can work. And I'm sure, you know, there's cynical people in New York and cynical people in California as well. And so I definitely do know what you're talking about. Um, but like Aaron said, this is an opportunity and especially nobody, they're gonna respect that even if they won't come. You have to be consistent and do it again and again and keep showing up as that person, but they're watching you, right? I didn't do social media until a year ago. And nobody who knows me today would believe that in a million years, because now a lot of people know me as I'm very upfront on social media. That wasn't new. It did take me a year to build it. But now when I say something, it, it's, it's real. But a year ago, I felt very uncomfortable and nervous to do that too. So you don't have to do it if you're not comfortable, number one. But know that if you are consistent, George, you will change people's minds. People will really see who you are and they see your character. Exactly. Any other, does anyone else have an aha? Anything that someone's open to try? Or any ideas that's not ours too. We'll take, we love hearing everything. Can you guys at least see how the 36 yeah, touch is a lot easier? Oh, we got someone. Katarina, go for it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, I used to, to work as an interpreter. So I was thinking that during a conference, for example, where many people are there and many professionals, uh, maybe that was uh, also um, a very good occasion for us to to just show our job and something like that. Yeah, so you mean like almost to have like a booth at a conference? What? Are you saying like at a conference? So, for example, my my uncle has a company with conferences, organizing conferences. Yeah in Greece every summer. So for example, that would be a, a great occasion for me to go there and have a stand or something like that. And during the break or the breaks uh, to give cards and, and something like that. It yeah. can be, yeah. We have like home, like a home expo where people go and there's like, um, construction, make sure it's a theme that is applied that matches what you're doing and that it's the kind of demographic that would work. And then again, Katerina, you would want to hold it accountable and make sure that you're comfortable. So when you host a booth, it can be expensive. So to start, you might want to just go and walk around and talk with people that are already there and feel it out first. Because again, we really want to make sure that you're spending your money and your time well. But it's definitely something to think about. Absolutely. I love that. And the other thing is don't be embarrassed about being a business person. I think sometimes if we say that we're doing it as a business, people will respect it more a little bit too, right? So don't pretend to have a fun party and then get them with business. You want to do the opposite. Promote your business, but only have fun at it. And they'll realize that, wow, this person is so successful that all they want is to give back to us, right? And you just, that, you know, we say come from gratitude or contribution. If you keep really pushing that, I think that people will be very comfortable or I found that. Do you agree, Erin? Yeah, I do agree with that. But I, I know that same feeling, George. Anything else, you guys, any more questions or ahas? Cause we're nearly at, we're pretty much all at the end. There's not really much more information I'll share our contact information so that if anybody wants to email us or text us privately, you can WhatsApp us um, and ask us any questions because we definitely want to be here. But any more ahas? Or any questions if we've talked too fast on anything or? Everything is clear yeah. for us. Wonderful. Well, and for those of you that are here, maybe you can meet together after this and talk about sharing some ideas. 
because it is so new, it may be fun, right? And make a competition out of it because I love competition. Ooh. And we can't wait to hear how your first events go. Oh, Naya, did you want to say something? You came off of me. Oh, no, no, no. I heard all this and it's very interesting. I think that uh, we have to try this in Athens almost. We, we are in Athens, so uh, the people are more interested, I think, in this uh, way of uh, uh, open uh, houses. And uh, this is interesting and uh, um, it's the character of uh, each of us. Uh, that uh, will uh, match with the kind of uh, uh, open house that can uh, attract people. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I know we can't wait to hear what your results are. Yeah. And next week, Erin talks more about weird. Next week is the database class. Guys, this is the best class. It wraps everything together. And if you say, I like the pillar of events and I like the pillar of referrals from last week, how do I turn this into an MREA business, right? I've read the book. How do I make sure that this comes back to me? Come next week and bring a guest, right? Bring someone that isn't with KW now, someone who is with KW that can learn and learn all of these. And Erin's gonna talk about how she makes her open house an event and all of these amazing ways to build your database and truly have this life by design that we talk about. So thank you guys so much for being with us. Thank you for your patience with the language and keeping up with us. Thank you for having us. We really appreciate. If we can do anything, let us know and we'll see you next Friday. Okay. Thank, thank you so much. Have a nice day. Bye. Thank Be you safe. so much. Be safe. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye.